This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yes, we almost didn't have her this week because Skype wanted to argue with her. It was sassing me, but I showed it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and this week, our, our special guests, new people on the site that we've been featuring on the show for the past few weeks, and we'll keep featuring until we run out of them. Uh, we have Trent and Greg, the people who make the Isle of Rangoon. How you guys doing? I'm doing okay. I'm not yet fully conscious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of those days, I suppose. But yeah, uh, for those of, for those of, yeah, for those people out there, I am not afraid of, of doing this on show. Uh, I swear. But for those of people who are out there who have never heard of you guys, uh, why not talk a little bit about yourselves? Okay. Well, um, it, it, we do puppets. <laughs> not that way. Uh, no. Um, the the Isle of Rangoon is a is a puppet driven uh, take on the online review and riff concept, uh, with a heavy focus on riffs. As we are both old uh, mystery science theater fans. And uh, we're doing what we can to kind of move forward the that experience with uh, riffs and with surrounding sketches and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, we I, I figured that people would rather look at a a puppet lizard thing than look at me, so that that works out well. Yeah, yeah, it's always nice to be able to uh, not have my face. just talk through a puppet. Yeah, I get to av I get to avoid the Doug effect. <laughs> Uh, yes, and and the two main puppets they are Starchbald and Sunny Jim, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I I remember seeing uh, Sunny Jim up there at Magfest when you guys were there. We were all in that room for uh, the chirpy viewing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> no. Uh, Magfest is only about a five hour drive, and that's I consider that <laughs> simple. Yeah. We, I mean, we drove a we. I literally drove all the way to California. And picked up Trent halfway, and we've done this what three times now? Yeah, yeah. It, uh... hmm. So yeah, Mag yeah, Magfest, and we're hoping to get we're hoping to hit more cons next year. Yeah, both that... of us, not just me. Well, yeah, that that was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I will say though, uh, uh, well, one, Diamanda is a total sweetheart, awesome person. Two, uh, Chirpy did not actually shock me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching everybody just flip out. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I've seen worse. Yeah. Okay, maybe not worse as far as terms of animation because wow, this is awful. But <laughs> yeah, as and... far as content goes, this is kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's it... too silly. Oh yeah. And as, and as far as the animation, as my girlfriend likes to remind me, that uh, Chirpy did win an award. Yeah. Uh, that's the shocker there. Yeah, that's that's the one that makes me go yeah. Well, I know because it's like because like you guys probably noticed I was like right there right in front of the camera when Hagen said that I I was about ready to start mugging the camera but Omega turned it off. I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can like if you watch it on over on a uh, Tigwa Tig you can see me start to want to try and do it and it's just ah. What if There's I too fun. many expressions to watch in that video. You got to do it a couple times. Oh yeah. And I still hold that Chirpy is a horny TARDIS. <laughs> uh, speaking of TARDIS, uh, who all saw the new Doctor Who? Ooh, me, yes. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Greg doesn't care, but... <laughs> no, pretty much. Yeah. So I watched it. I got to watch it. Uh, I, I went to one of these streaming sites that streams like the BBC to everywhere else in the world. So I watched it when the uh, when the English people watched it. And I loved it. I thought it was gr I thought it was pretty good. There, there are obviously little problems here and there that that could be pointed out, but overall, I like it. I'm liking Capaldi as the Doctor. Uh, as, as an old school Who fan, mm -hmm. uh, any time that you have a a regeneration story that isn't terrible, double thumbs up. Mm -mm. 
the regeneration stories are almost always awful. <laughs> if you go back, you know, through the whole history. Yeah. And, and the new opening, you know, I, I'm sure everybody who's listening to this has probably already heard it. But for those who haven't, that was actually based off of a fan-made opening. Moffat came by and saw it. He's like, hey, I, I, I would like you to use that for the show. So we, like, hired him and got him to, like, revamp it and do pretty up, pretty it up a little bit. And there you go. You have the new opening for Doctor Who. And I thought it looked great. It looks very steampunk. I love it. The, yes. the new opening sequence is very nice. It it looks like something they would have done in the 60s if they had been able to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and with the older Doctor, and, and the insistence that the Doctor is not her boyfriend, and not in the comedic... Well, no, he's not, when they obviously very much have that vibe about them. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of... I'm finding that refreshing. They got the round things back in the TARDIS! <laughs> needs more round things. Where did uh, I put those? <laughs> there's been a slow walk of the Doctor back to a more classic style Doctor, mm-hmm. uh, starting with Matt Smith. Yeah. And uh, I think the them moving him to an older actor and uh, dropping the flirtation element with the companion is sort of them really trying to push home that the sort of classic Doctor thing. Oh, yeah. Because Capaldi, right now, he is the oldest. I think he's tied with uh, William Hartnell for being the oldest man to portray, portray the Doctor. Yes, he's way more spry than Hartnell was. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> there, there's even kind of a, uh, a meta-contextual thing about walking slowly back to the old series, mm-hmm. since the point of this season is going to be finding Gallifrey. Oh, yeah. And, and I can't wait. And I've got to wonder, and by the way, I'll... I'll Try and make sure I have it in the description or somewhere up on the screen or whatever. But we, we, yeah, slight spoilers. The woman at the end, who the fuck is she? Okay. A uh, couple of possibilities. Uh, the the trick with that is that Moffat likes to double bluff mm-hmm. a lot. Like uh, the, the promos for uh, the last, I think it was the last season. Uh, arranged things in certain orders to make it look like they were doing different homages to classic who that they weren't doing. Mm -hmm. Like they, they edited together parts of the, the Minotaur sequence with the white robots and it made really look a whole lot like they were going to be doing a land of uh, a land of fiction story. But my thought is from uh, the initial, well, at least what we are meant to think early on, I think is that with the mannerisms and the nickname that we are looking at the next generation regeneration of the master. Oh dear. And the master being a female. This this would be interesting. Although she also mentioned that, you know, she called the doctor her boyfriend. Or at least I'm assume I'm assuming she's calling the doctor her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So why one why would the master say that in any regeneration? Maybe he does have those feelings for her. I don't know. But I'm also thinking at first, I thought it might have been the Ronnie, but thinking back to like the two serials I've seen her in, I am not counting the Dimensions in Time mm-hmm. special. Um, it doesn't seem like her, but then again, no. uh, the Ronnie is much more detached, and the only indication that was ever done that there might be something between the Ronnie and the Doctor was somebody mentioned it to the Doctor once, and he kind of went, thought about it for a second, and went, "Nah." <laughs> um. But uh, part of it is uh, they're, if they're branching off of the sort of Sims Master incarnation, there was a whole lot of implied tension there. Yeah. Uh, at least as like we're the last two beings to exist from our home world. And that just even sarcastically referring to herself as the Doctor's girlfriend would fit with the way the Master likes to mock things. I just I heard that Charles Dance was going to come in and play the master to match age with the new doctor. It 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 again it could be uh like I said Moffat likes to double bluff. Mm-hmm. Um her characterization was very similar to what you got out of uh out of out of the the Sims era master. Yeah. You know, very kind of over the top and dramatic and so forth. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I, I don't think that necessarily that she's meant to be the master. I think that's what we are meant to assume early on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Another possibility that I thought of was uh, Tasha Lem. 
which I know it would probably take some gymnastics to fit her in somehow, because it's like, okay, if she's from Gallifrey, why is she going back and trying to keep Gallifrey from, you know, being summoned back? And and we all know what happens to her. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just – and you would think the Daleks would want to rub that into the Doctor, I would think, but eh, then again, I don't know. Uh, so that would, that would be kind of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, I guess. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see it unfold. Oh yes, and yeah. I look forward to the next one, which is a Dalek episode. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> Peter Capaldi taking on the Daleks right, almost right away. Just boom, there you go. Yeah, they're. Uh, well, again, it's it's one of the things that they try to do with the new Doctor is get get him into conflict with a classic. Uh, a, a legacy villain early on to sort of establish mm -hmm. for the fan base. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's see. In fact, I think I think every Doctor has faced the Daleks at least on screen, uh, or at least encountered them on screen somehow. Yeah, uh, the only one that you would you haven't actually seen the Daleks in the same room with the Doctor is uh, is McGann. Mm -hmm. But that's because he's had a whopping two times that he's shown up on TV. Yeah. And, of, and of course, you know, the second time being the Time War, which, guess who was fighting? Oh, yeah, Time Wars of the Daleks. So yeah. it's kind of in, in, implied there. Yeah. So, so uh, I think every Doctor's encountered the Cybermen, too. Um, on screen, all of them except three. At least oh, initially. Yeah. Initially. I mean, I know in the five Doctors, they, you know, the third Doctor kind of encounters them a little bit here and there. Yeah. And the Raston Warrior Robot, which, when are they going to bring that back? Because that would probably just be one of the... That is probably just as random as bringing the Macro back. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what I am what I always have my fingers crossed for every, uh, every season is a uh, return appearance by Romana. But it's yet to happen. Yeah. No well, canine, don't care. <laughs> Now that is something that that Capaldi's doctor should pick up is canine. Uh, I mean, if we're gonna harken back to classic Who, we got gotta go all the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh God, that means oh shit! Did, they never did write in like anything involving Sarah Jane since Elizabeth Sladen died. No, you would think because that... because you know after a uh, 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 goddamn what's his name the brigadier. Uh, Nicholas yeah. Courtney, after he died, they wrote in a little bit at like I think it was like the season six finale, mm -hmm. and and you know showed that the brigadier had died. I'm just I'm just waiting for them to do something similar with Sarah Jane and the Doctor, mm -hmm. and and then you know K9 would come back to him for a little bit if you, if we want to tie it in that way. Right. Well, the, I, I, the... I think they haven't done it because it would just be too heartbreaking. And they have done a lot of things to make you sad in this show, but nothing could make you possibly sadder than that. Yeah. yeah. Plus, if they want to bring in K-9, the Doctor can just make another one. This is true. Um, he's uh, – it's only it, – he he's only a fi uh, 50th century human technology. I mean it's it's something he can work with. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> oh, so, so overall – Go go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, last time I talked to her, which was like maybe an hour or two ago, my girlfriend's checking it out finally, so I could do gush with her a little bit more about it tonight. Mm -hmm. And I know she's excited to see Capaldi do his thing. Oh, uh, ah, so uh, so yeah, go check it out. And uh, before we hit the news, we've got our shout-outs this week. I've actually got one. I've yeah, got one that I've actually prepared for, and I've actually been listening to some of her stuff. Um, just in the past couple of days, because I've been wanting to catch up on podcast stuff and and everything. And her name is Mandy Statmiller. You can find her over at mandystatmiller.com. It's uh, and Statmiller is spelled S-T-A-D-T-M-I-L-L-E-R. She is a journalist. She's a comedian. I I want to say that she is the uh, one of the head writers or head editors or something over at exojane.com as well. And she has her own podcast. Uh, the not, I was about to say the name of another podcast, but no, uh, it is News Horror with Mandy Statmiller. So go check that out. She is she's really funny, and and she's 
probably more sexually minded than I am, <laughs> at least on her on her, on her podcast. Uh, which it's I, I I would say that's a fair feat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, MandyStatMiller.com, you could check out all of her stuff there. Uh, News Horror is also on iTunes. If you want to just go and look that up on iTunes, it's really easy to find. And uh, she's generally pretty pretty awesome lady. Uh, Kat, do you have any? Um, I don't really have any particular shout outs other than to say um, good job to everybody who's participating in the uh, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Including you. Yes, I got challenged. Um, I'm amazed it actually took that long. <laughs> Uh, I have not been challenged, but I also put out there that I can't really do it with the donating because I'm Poe. That's why I didn't nominate you. I was like, I'm going to make him do it. No, he probably doesn't have any money. Hold on, let me pick some people who might have some cash. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, if I had money, you would have totally made me do it. Oh, that, that, you know what? That, that's actually nice to know. <laughs> and down here in Florida, it is balls hot, so I, it would probably be, be a very welcome thing. Oh. That's why I didn't mind. I'm like, it's 100 degrees today. Hmm, not a bad day to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, yeah. So, um, I know I'm kind of putting you guys on the spot, uh, but Greg, Trent, do you have any particular people or shows or whatever you want to shout out? Greg, you got, got anything? I'm... I'm... Synapses, I'm trying to think of people who... Uh... That most of the people in this group wouldn't be already aware of is the trick. Yeah, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank at the moment. Yeah, well, that, well, that's fine. Uh, most most of the time, Cat's on here. She hardly doesn't really have anybody. I'm terrible. <laughs> ah, it's okay. There there have been weeks where even I don't have anybody because just been busy with everything else, and it's like, oh shit. Oh, well, I I've got one I can toss out. Um. If uh, there is a YouTube channel called Opinionville. Oh, ah, yes, yes. Yes, and uh, it is one of the early inspirations for Isle of Rangoon, and we have actually, uh, we work with, uh, we've done some crossovers with them and some uh, collaborations with their, their channel founder, Jason Harding. And I have actually provided one of the puppets who is canonically from Rangoon and just wound up uh, be living in Opinionville as opposed to one of the other many places they live across the country. Nice. And uh, the channel is... Uh, it's, <laughs> he makes it difficult because it's Jason with a D. It's uh, D-J-E-Y-P-S-C-U-M. It's uh, <laughs> uh, D-G-E-Y... P S C U N, which is still phonetically Jason, but using the least commonly used letters. But if you ser- just search YouTube for Opinionville, you will also pull it up. All right, and something I'm actually going to try and remember to actually do in in shows following this is actually have the links to wherever we're talking about, you know, below the thing uh, here and over over on Nerdvice and everywhere else that I post this. Uh, I've been kind of slack on that. I need to not be so slack on that. <laughs> oh, so with that, uh, that'll, that should take care of the shout outs for this week. And we'll go ahead and move on to the news. Oh, boy. And this one, everybody, take a shot. It's Florida. Uh, yes, yes, fucking Florida. God damn it, Florida. Is that serious? Because I do have, like, root beer schnapps and arm's length. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, Every do time it. A, a story comes from Florida, take a shot. Yes. Yeah, and I know somebody's like, well, wait, we do that on, on what the fuck is wrong with you. There's a reason for that. <laughs> we both understand that you need a shot every time something from Florida comes up. Uh, uh, so, Dune Din, Florida. It seemed like a scene out of a Norma- Norman Rockwell painting. T.J. Guero served cookies and strawberry country time at his lemonade stand with a wave and a smile. The 12-year-old had tested various locations and hours of operation before setting on 3 to 7 p.m. at Patricia Avenue and San Salvador Drive. He got a neighbor's permission to pitch a homemade yellow sign in the grass and sell his fare from Tupperware on a white card table. It's all about profit, the kid said, who has paired his lemonade earnings with lawn mowing cash for like an iPod, snacks, cell phone bill, trips with his grandfather, and dinners with his mother. 
this kid is is awesome. Uh, but the boy's entrepreneurial spirit has ranked at least rankled rather at least one neighbor who has emailed City Hall at least four times in two years and asked law enforcement to shut TJ down. Fuck you, neighbor. Doug Wilkie contends that the Palm Harbor Middle School students' year-round operation is an illegal business that causes excessive traffic, noise, trash, illegal parking, and other problems that reduce property values. Please help me regain my quiet home and neighborhood. By the way, he's 61. And he's an asshole. Damn kids, get off my lawn. And you know, this is Old not... man yells at crowd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And here's the thing. This is not the first time something like this has come up in Florida. I remember a story a few years ago, covered on Two Cents even, where I, I want to say it was like either cops or, or, or some somebody legally was able to make a little girl take down her lemonade stand because she did not have an occupational license. <laughs> this is a kid with a lemonade stand. We're not exact, you know. They're not exactly hiring people and, and and you know reporting their earnings to the government. This kid is twelve. He is twelve years old. He is just wanting to earn some money. He's got a good work ethic. And now this old fucker is going to come along and say, "Well, you're making me. My neighborhood is not as quiet as I want it to be." Well, fuck you. What do you expect him to do? I mean, he's, he's clearly already got the mentality of the American work ethic in mind. Work two jobs and let some old fucker rant at you for a while. <sighs> just What an a-hole. Yeah. It's just, oh, what the fuck. And, and here's the thing. His longest, ever, his longest line ever has been five people. At least two neighbors said customers are allowed to park in their driveways. Hmm. Uh. So, you know, and this was after the assertion that, you know, customers park in front of the old guy's home, which obviously no. The city could face repercussion in the event of someone became ill from spoiled or contaminated food or drink sales, he also wrote. Oh. If it's just really, dude. Oh, come on. Also, if they're out there, they might get struck by a meteorite. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get the Ebola and the Salmonella and the other stuff. This yeah. jerk gives misanthropes a bad name. That's it's all there is to it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <sighs> it's like, really? Why the fuck, people? And like I said, this is not a new thing. People, what, what, what's, what is the harm? Oh, no. Somebody might clog up your sidewalk for like five minutes while a kid pours a bit of lemonade, which I'm willing to bet is pretty fresh. The day he puts it out there, he has some ice. Maybe he has a cooler. I don't know. You know, I'm sure he has some way of keeping it fresh. So you're not drinking old lemonade that, you know, he pulled out of a locker room from like five years ago. Also, it's country time lemonade, and I don't think bacteria can actually grow, grow in that. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, so, it's uh, it's antiseptic. Yeah, so he's pretty safe. Well, that's um, just called a justification. That's yeah, that's not a concern. That's it, I'm I'm flailing for a reason to get you to shut it down. Yeah, he's just a cranky old man who doesn't like that there's you know anybody having fun within range of his lawn. And so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like the kids cleared all the way around. He's not on your property. Shut the fuck up. And even workers are coming by and getting getting lemonade for for their Gatorade bottles from this kid. And that's awesome. And it's like, hey, you know, it's cheap. We get, you know, we help the kid out. We get a little bit of stuff for us. Win win. We need we need more kids like this. In fact, I am going to, in fact, I am going to encourage the kids around here, like like maybe on a weekend or something, to open a lemonade stand and see what happens. I'm going to encourage this. It's 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 honestly it's one of the most American things you can do is to sit on a corner and have a lemonade stand sometime in the summer. Everybody's done it. I feel like. Yeah, I personally haven't, but you know, if if I had the same mindset now that I did back then, I sure as hell would have. I I tried it once as a kid, and our neighborhood got like zero traffic. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I sold, like, a glass to my dad, and it was just like, okay, we're done here. <laughs> yeah. 
Although, although you know what, we have a we have a college almost literally across the street from us. So who knows? It might work out that way. And my dad is actually a city commissioner, so hmm, a little bit of extra strings being pulled. <laughs> oh, so we go from that, and um, penis holders, brace yourselves. <clears throat> Or even non-penis holders, brace yourself. Shit, what am I talking about? Just brace yourself because this story is truly horrifying. And that last sentence is exactly from the story. A 52-year-old man nicknamed the Penis Collector has been arrested by police in Slavonsky Broad, a small, a small city rest rather, in eastern Croatia, on suspicion of possessing a collection of human body organs. The man was apprehended earlier this week when authorities entered his apartment. They found jars and jars of human penises soaking in formaldehyde. Okay. I understand people want to have the most realistic feel feeling sex toys. I understand this. And in fact, I encourage the most realistic feeling sex toys. It's great. The sensation is great. And I realize that everybody that's listening to this is thinking, dude, that's too much information. But think about it. It's true. However, there is a point where you go too far. Saving penises and formaldehyde is not the way to go about increasing your dildo collection. I don't know. Maybe he's just preparing for the apocalypse. It's either this or bitcoins. And <laughs> he just wants a... a he just doesn't understand that dick as a currency requires the dick to be attached to something alive. Yeah, I would, I would just – what the hell, dude? Um, uh, according to sources, the man, whose name has not been released, works as a registered nurse at a city hospital. He has no criminal record and has been described by some as a family man, although others say he is an alcoholic who often showed up to work drunk. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just imagining he started this collection while drunk. He just shows up. I'm gonna get Southern Duke. Kids are being bastards, and my wife she don't love me no more. What am I gonna do? Oh, hey, I work the morgue. These men don't need their penises anymore. And then he gets home like, you know, in the morning and realizes what the hell happened. And he's like, oh shit, can't really return them, so may as well save them. I just have to. I just have to wonder what was going through his mind. And if I was anywhere near close or right, I'm going to be very surprised. Wow. And we don't. And the article doesn't state that you know if the any, how the police learned about the collection. And it's also unclear how the man got his hand on so many human penises. And it is believed they were cut off from the dead bodies of hospital patients. Holy shit! <laughs> I think I was about right. Oh, uh, although to be fair, they don't need them, but still, dude, collecting them? Uh, not cool. Not cool. No, no. That's not how organ donation works. <sighs> yeah, no. The man who has since been released from custody now awaits criminal charges for disturbing the deceased, which has a maximum sentence of up to two years in jail. Disturbing the deceased. I mean, okay, you know, you know, throw the book at him, sure. But the wording, disturbing the deceased. They're dead. They they can't be disturbed. Now, now you word it some other way, to where it doesn't sound as goofy to me or to other people like me. And and yeah, and like I said, I don't not saying don't throw the book at them, don't charge them with something. With just the wording is kind of goofy to me. I don't know about well, you guys. What would you say? Um, I I, I well, there there's disturbing in the sense that uh, that something is mentally disturbing. And then there is also disturbing, as in physically disturbing something. Uh, and since this is the term, the charge is probably translated from Croatian, mm -hmm. it's most likely coming through a little bit more literal than you'd expect. Ah. But, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'm just on that one. But still, dude. Dude, no. Just, just, no. Dude, if I you mean, want you a collection of dogs... Bag Dragon exists. <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, you could say it as something like disturbing the peace. Oh, disturbing God. the peace. Oh, God. Oh. 
Oh, god damn it. Really? Oh. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> oh. So, okay. Oh, shit. We have to take another shot. Oh, god, really? Yes, really. <sighs> Police arrested a St. Petersburg man last week who, they say, beat another man unconscious with a BB gun and, believing the man to be dead, asked his girlfriend to help bury the body. Police said Nicholas M. Harris, 20, planned to kill the man Monday. He hit the victim in the face with a metal BB gun repeatedly, broke his nose, and rendered him unconscious, authorities said. Harris thought he'd killed the man, so he placed him in a car and drove home, police said. If you're going to drive around anyway, why not just drive somewhere else and just dump the body somewhere? Really, dude, come on. Uh, a witness said Harris's girlfriend watched as he dragged the victim inside, according to police. Harris asked his girlfriend to help bury the body, and when she refused, he threatened to kill her and the other witness with a knife. After a few hours, the victim woke. Harris's mother and brother drove the man to the hospital, where doctors treated his broken nose. He also required stitches. Harris is being held in the Pinellas County Jail and, and charged with first-degree attempted murder and multiple counts of battery, assault, false imprisonment, possessing a firearm as a felon, and burglary. Burglary? Where did burglary come from out of all this? Because I, I don't, I don't see the burglary. That's you know breaking into somebody's home and stealing their shit, right? You know breaking and entering, burgling their stuff. Uh, unless, unless maybe, maybe they, unless maybe they broke his nose and then they burgled it. I don't know, man. <laughs> nose burglar. There you go. No, I don't know I'm, if, I'm... if if the guy took a pack of Twizzlers from the guy's house after beating him unconscious with a, a BB gun. I I think I can see how that might not quite make the. Uh, quite not quite make the article yeah. <laughs> i'm hung up on the timeline okay, okay so he drags he drags the dude to his girlfriend's place mm -hmm. and a, a, after a few hours the victim what was the dude doing that whole time i guess playing like, call of duty i <laughs> i guess arguing with his girlfriend because you know it probably just took a few hours like like like, bitch, we don't do this. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. I'll kill you. I don't care. <laughs> Just, what the hell? A few hours, the victim awoke. The mother and brother... Do, I, I... You just gonna leave a dead body sitting around for a couple hours? I... Uh... It's like, really? I mean, I know the dead body's not gonna do anything, but it's gonna stink after a while. I don't think planning was high on the, the priority list here. No, no, very much not. Oh God damn it, Florida! <laughs> yeah, is... just I'm just yeah. You've got a couple hours. I mean, personally, you know, if you've got a dead body and who hasn't been there, you, you kind of want to get rid of that thing one way or the other as quickly yeah. as you can. Yeah, and you're in Saint Petersburg. You're near the goddamn. You, I, I can't remember if it's near the ocean or near the Gulf. You're near some big body of water. You could just in Florida. You're at least near some kind of peat bog. Yeah, I mean, hell, even I am not too far from a bot from a large body of water. Maybe I'm, fifty yeah, miles. Considered checking for breathing, you know, pulse. Yeah, I'm willing to bet they don't say this in the article, but I'm willing to bet that alcohol was a factor somewhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> Professor Moriarty, this guy certainly is not um... exactly. Oh lordy, and you know who else is not Professor Moriarty? This guy up in Ohio. <clears throat> A prominent pro-life activist has called to ban all public nudity because he said that topless dancers who protested at his church had committed an offense to God. At least six bare-breasted women and other supporters of the Foxhole North Club marched in front of the New Beginning Ministries Church in Warsaw earlier this month after the church spent nine years coming to their club to protest nudity. So nine years, they go and they protest, maybe even harass, because I can see them doing this. All, all the women that shake their tits around for people who give them money and, or what have you, and not really hurting anybody. And, and as far as the article denotes, the club does nothing but you know, just tolerate them. So when the shoe is on the other foot, the first thing this pastor does, or, or this, yeah, well, this pastor, guy, whatever, whatever is his name is, we'll get to that in a moment, says, you know, yeah, we need to have laws against public nudity because they came and protested our church and, and, and things and stuff. Dr. Dr. Patrick Johnson, 
who is director of the anti-abortion group Personhood Ohio, responded to the protests by asking Ohioans to call the legislature in support of banning all public nudity in the state. I am sick that women can legally bear their breasts to children and to married men against their will in Ohio. He wrote on his Facebook page for like that six Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's rather specific. <laughs> I'm sorry, just you can legally bear their breasts to children and married men against their will. <laughs> married men. <laughs> what about the single men? What are the about the men who are not married? What See, are... the the story here is plain because one of the protesters got a little bit too long of a glance from the pastor, and the missus is not happy. Yeah, because and and I do want to note before we go into other meaty parts of this story that it is not currently against the law for women to be topless in public in Ohio. So women, all you women up in Ohio, you can go around shirtless just like a dude can, and it's legal. It is not against the law currently. So, you know, and if somebody tries to tell you otherwise, you just say, hey, look up the, look up the laws. Uh, Johnson told the local news station that what they did was an offense to God, was an offense to the public morality, and the legislature should act to criminalize what they did, which is bad enough. He also argued that women with exposed breasts were the reason that Ohio's gay pride parade was so popular. <laughs> oh. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to go to a gay pride parade because of the massive amount of titties flopping around there. I mean, it's not like people don't go there, you know, because they want to support each other and show that, hey, you know, we are a thing. We are proud of who we are, even though we were born into this. You know, we don't have any control over it. Not just, not trying to knock it. It's an awesome thing, and you should be proud of it. It is just... You know, I'm I am of the camp of that. If you are gay, it's most likely genetic. You know, you were most likely born that way. Just saying. But still, pride is good. I enjoy it. I guess. <laughs> Never been to one, but I enjoy it anyway. I am talking myself into a corner. Cat, please save me. Um. Yeah. The idea that a bunch of people go to the pride parade to see women flesh their titties you're thinking of mardi gras um yeah it's totally different i know maybe sometimes it doesn't seem that way but uh mardi gras is what you're thinking of yeah and and somebody actually pointed out you know if you ban public nudity but also outlaw breastfeeding in public places which is what people want to do anyway because oh my god a woman flashing a tit just to feed a baby some guy might get a random boner and, and start masturbating right there in the food court no that doesn't happen and if it does then the guy needs to be carted away and smacked with a heart with with a fucking red herring Ugh. the only thing that comes of the only problem that comes from women breastfeeding in public is that people pay a lot of attention to the floor and the ceiling. Yeah. And, oh, just looking away. Yeah. It's like, I mean, even I, and, and I am on record, and everybody, everybody who knows me knows I am a very sexually minded person. And even I will look at a woman breastfeeding a baby. I will not sit there and go, oh, my God, that's so hot. I'll be like, okay, woman breastfeeding baby, whatever, and just move on. That's that's the only reaction people need to have. Other, the only other one being, oh, it's so beautiful, because that you know that act it can be a very beautiful thing. A mother bonding with her child, that's a beautiful thing. In in a completely natural, it's been around since the dawn of time sort of way. Yeah, exactly. So you know, so this guy, he's he's an idiot, <laughs> and just is oh my god, naked titties. <laughs> they protesting me. Why are you protesting me? Because you protested us for nine years, you schmuck. Ugh. So, so we go now a couple of states to the south. To Dyersburg, Tennessee. Uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee. I've been there a grand total of one time. And from what I've seen of it, eh, it's just like your generic American city. So, <laughs> uh, but on Tuesday... Dyer County high school officials spent the morning fielding telephone calls concerning the in-school suspension of a student. 
While school officials declined to answer specifics surrounding the case due to privacy laws concerning the student involved, some light was shed on the situation during a Tuesday morning interview. We can't discuss discipline issues because of right to privacy of students, but I can say that there are two sides to every story, uh, said DCHS Assistant Principal Lynn Garner. Sometimes people spin things and turn them to make them seem one way, but I cannot discuss anything specific in order to protect the child. Excuse me, and it is now a real show. Ah. The incident involved 17-year-old Kendra Turner, a senior at the high school. Turner was in class on Monday morning and said, bless you, after a fellow classmate sneezed. The phrase was listed on the chalkboard as one of several as one of several students were not supposed to say during class, according to Turner. We were not allowed to say, bless you, my bad, hang out, dumb, stupid stuff, and things like that. Really? That whole phrase on that was on there? <laughs> oh. Garner acknowledged that the respective teachers at the high school are given the opportunity to set classroom rules as long as those rules fall within the guidelines of the student handbook. We allowed teachers to set rules in the classroom. Yeah, basically reiterating everything. Uh, the incident on Monday, when the teacher, 40-year respected veteran of the school system, stood up and asked which student made the bless you comment, Turner acknowledged it was her who did so. She asked why I said it, and I told her I was being courteous, and she asked me who told me it was a courtesy. I told her my pastor and my parents taught me to say it. Shortly after, Turner, Turner was reportedly instructed to go to the principal's office. I say reportedly because I've got a little bit extra after, after getting through the big meat of this. Uh, where was I? Uh, where she was placed in ISS for the remainder of the period. Now, from all intents and from how it looks right now, it looks like, okay, bless you was put up on the board as something not to say. She said it. She got in trouble. That's how it looks here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. On Tuesday afternoon, at a press conference held at Dyersburg First Assembly of God, Turner wanted to end the incident and move forward in a positive manner while putting God first. Really? Okay, okay, okay. It, you, you got in trouble for saying something you weren't supposed to. It was part of the rules. For whatever reason, I am assuming just, you know, if you... If you have somebody sneeze, you're in Tennessee, you're going to have like 20 students turning around and saying, bless you, and that could be distracting for the teacher. You know, that's that, that's how I would see it. You know, it's a distractive thing. And, and here's her quote. I want God to be able to be talked about in school. I want them to realize that God is in control and they are not. I also don't want the teacher being bashed because that's harmful, kind of harmful and disrespectful. So, okay. Credit at the end. She doesn't want the teacher being bashed. Okay. Credit. But when the hell did this turn into a religious thing? Because th th it's, 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 not, it's not a religious thing. It's not, not, not based on this article. But now. There, there is a little bit extra, like I said. Um, uh, Hemant Menta, over at the Friendly Atheist uh, blog over on Pathios.com, he did an article about this. Um, and and she, and he found that she actually, the, the girl, Kendra Turner, posted a Facebook uh, post about it. And she says, today my teacher sent me to the office because someone sneezed and I said, bless you. Not, she said, we do not do godly speaking in my class. I stood up for my belief and said, I have a constitutional right to speak about my God, with two exclamation points. So if any other teacher wants to get on to me for sticking up for my religion, then go right ahead, because in the end, I will win because I'm doing what God wants me to do. Thank you for, to the rest of my class for defending me when I got sent out. Love my class, especially her friend here. Tell me. We, we read... We, we heard the original, the other, the original in the article. Does did that story sound anything like her religious beliefs were being violated, even in any sense? I mean, or or am I missing something? No, uh, it's uh, what it is. Is it's a. Uh... It's being framed as a political correctness goes crazy story, mm -hmm. um, and I've, you know, I'm in the South. I think pretty much all of us are. 
Um, I don't know where Kat's from. I live in the Midwest, so it's pretty much yeah. south. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is that there, there's no such thing as a small deal uh, when the G word gets thrown around. Uh, at once you, once you're south of the Mason Dixon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so also, it's a real good way to uh, get a massive swell of public support from people who don't read things very closely or pay much attention. Yeah. Which is why I'm really glad I found Hemant's uh, thing on the Friendly Atheist here, because, yeah, because he called up uh, the principal, Peggy Dodds, and he got her side of the story before the shit hit the fan in the conservative world. Uh, according to Dodds, Turner was not given an in-school suspension. She wasn't sent out of the classroom either. She chose to walk out. And most importantly, she wasn't punished by the teacher for saying, God bless you. However, the teacher did admonish her for disrupting the classroom. Didn't I call that? Since I can't, since he can't verify the specifics of what was said, including the remarks by Godly speaking, he offers this hypothetical. The class was supposed to be quiet. Someone sneezed. Turner said something in response, doesn't matter what, and the teacher asked her to be quiet. Turner took that as a knock on her faith and felt the need to defend against it. The teacher only saw this as further disruption and the situation escalated. The student, clearly frustrated, ran out of the classroom and, not long after that, posted something on Facebook. And he does note that it's he's not saying that's what happened, but that's plausible. And I agree. You know, you know that's most likely something closer along those lines that happened. Because in the South, no teacher is, you know, no teacher, especially a 40-year veteran of a Southern school, is going to try and admonish somebody for their religion. They're just not going to do it. That, that, that that's too closely held down here, you know. Is is you know, and for her to pull around and pull something like this, she did say, you know, don't bash the teacher. But yet you were already lying on the teacher. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm I'm assuming she is lying on the teacher by saying that the teacher, you know, didn't want her to say that because she the teacher was against God or whatever. When that's likely not further, you know, cannot be further from the truth. So, I'm, I'm just thinking it was just a disruption thing. She turned it into, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, 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 I'm wanting to say martyrdom, but I don't think it's quite that much. Uh, persecution complex. I think it's what I'm thinking she's trying to turn it into. <sighs> Kat, you've been quiet. Do you have any thoughts? Um, you can't. You can't see me because this is just uh, audio. But I'm shaking my head a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I want to see this full list of things they're not allowed to say. I would too. And more importantly, why they wouldn't be allowed to say them? I mean, a most... lot. Uh, uh, from what is on that list, I'm willing to bet it was an English classroom. Yeah. There was a lot of colloquialism and slang in there. Yeah. So, and that would make sense, sure. And and if she was disrupting, like like uh, Hemant and I are 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 speculating, then again, it's looking more like yeah, she did it because she has a persecution complex or something, or she just wanted to get noticed and big and famous and well, she is noticed, that's for sure. She's on this show. <laughs> Ah, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no pun intended either. So our last story. Voting is supposed to be a right and a privilege, but in the pint-sized high mountain town of Montezuma, it also has become grounds for a lawsuit. Uh-oh. The town and its novice clerk have filed suit against every registered voter in the town, claiming that an election held last spring had numerous errors. The lawsuit filed in Summit County District Court last week lists errors that include numbers that don't add up and mismatched ballots that had to be patched together with the clerk's sewing machine. Sewing machine? What? Wait, what? Um, who, 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 what? It, yeah. Is this is this happening in Hoot and Holler? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, the lawsuit asked the judge to command all 61 registered voters, so yes. Yeah, <laughs> just, what? <laughs> the sewing machine. <laughs> I can't, I don't, 
you know, when I initially put this story in the file, the, the sewing machine thing did not really get to me. But for some reason, right now, the sewing machine is... Uh, what the... F Why? And Andrew Cole, spokesman for the Colorado Secretary of State's office, says, I have never heard of anything like this. I'm with you, Mr. Cole. This is certainly an unusual step to take. Yeah. Several residents have retained a Gunnison attorney to challenge the lawsuit. Luke Danielson filed a motion Tuesday claiming the court has no jurisdiction because the town's residents haven't been served with notices to appear in court. <laughs> well, yeah. It's a mat the matter of a town suing his voters began with a highly controversial election for mayor and town board. It was held April Fool's Day. Why would you hold an election on April Fool's Day? Because you've got 61 registered voters. There's clearly nothing going on in that city. And they are <laughs> they're going to find their fun where they can find it. Yeah. And this is a town of, according to the article, 65 residents. We're, we're, straw for, we're a draw for a short straw used to decide to, who had to serve as mayor. An unprecedented dozen candidates ran for office. One of... Almost one fifth of your town ran for office. You must <laughs> suck if if everybody thinks they can do a better job. <laughs> I'm I'm sure one of those running for office is the incumbent. But just wow, that's I never thought I could say something like that, and it would actually be true. Okay, I never thought I would say the phrase one fifth of your town running for mayor let alone say it and it be accurate. That's, uh, the hot-button issue that led to this kind of participation involves second home owners. New Montezuma Mayor Leslie Davis was elected by a three-vote margin, claimed that 13 of the voters and at least two of the candidates were not really residents of the town. Oh, God, they are that small. Oh... This is our only option to have an objective judge take a look at the election controversy and give us his advice on how to move forward. Oh, wow. And locals say it is easy to tell who doesn't really live there by the piles of unplowed snow and driveways. Montezuma sits at 10,200 feet, five miles up from a, up a dirt road from the Keystone Ski Resort. I see where the second homeowners come into play now. They probably, some of the homes are bought up by crusty white motherfuckers. And don't even live there half the time. They only come there during the winter. Or summer. Whichever. It's just... Wow. Uh, that this is... This is... Keep going. It gets better. Yeah. <laughs> the lawsuit states that an investigation by the Summit County District Attorney's Office found that at least five voters were not qualified to vote because they weren't residents. The lawsuit also cites a number of mistakes in the ballots, including the fact that there were no removable stubs to protect the anonymity of the voters. To, rectify, to try to rectify that, town clerk Helen Mormon sewed stubs to the ballots, but didn't realize the ballots still contained numbers that gave away voters' identities. Sewed. Sewed. Here's where I'm getting hung up. Sewed? I, I mean... Are, are the ballots made out of skunk pelt? What? <laughs> <laughs> of all the resources at your disposal, including, I don't know, fucking scotch tape, this person chose to get out a sewing machine? And you know what? This is middle of nowhere Colorado. Surely you could get to some place like Colorado Springs or fucking Denver. Or wherever. Go and five an miles and depot. borrow some borrow a sh stack of paper. Yeah. And you know what? From the, the ski resort. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you guys could have the internet out there. Uh, you know, you could order stuff offline. Mm, you know, that could... Well, I don't know. Does ski resort have Wi-Fi? I hope so. Well, they probably they pay probably a lot do. for it. Yeah. Probably. No, they probably if, don't have internet. It's if, kind of... If there's they're a isolated lot of enough. out there. Yeah. If they're isolated enough, it's just going to be the only option they're going to have a satellite. Oh God! And I've heard of I've heard of some people with satellite internet connections, and oh God, I feel. But hey, they got to have phone lines. You can make an order over the phone for something. There you go. You know, get the number. I'm still trying to process sewing. Well, <laughs> you see, this is what happens when your electoral commissioner is Snuffy Smith. 
<laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Oh, God. The upshot. There is an upshot. The upshot to all the mistakes is that no one in Montezuma knows if the current elected officials were elected property. This is Fair an enough. upshot. This is an upshot. Well, so, the up, an upshot basically is just a roundup. Yeah. You know, that just yeah. means that's the, and you know what? That's fair. Yeah. It's fair that you can't be sure if your electors, if, if your elected officials were actually elected. Yeah. Yeah. Since I 8%, that. it's possible that up to 8% of their voter turnout is invalid. Yeah. Wow. Just, just no challenge was filed within the 10 day window following the election. Thus the lawsuit filed by Denver attorney, Kendra Carberry. Yeah. Carberry. She did not return call seeking comment. Wait, lawsuit filed. I think there's supposed to be a was in there. Who edited this? The uh, electoral commissioner. Apparently. Uh, you know, they could sew a was in there somewhere. Uh. Now I'm paying someone to sue me, Montezuma voter Chris Baker said. It's fairly disturbing that the town is using our tax money to sue us. What are they going to get out of suing their taxpayers? More tax money? I mean, if they really wanted to hurt them with, you know, by money, monetarily hurt them, they could just raise taxes. You don't well, need to go I, through all this. I don't think that's that. I think that's that this lawsuit is the only way they can actually get... Somebody I, from the big outside world to look at this thing. It's also, it sounds from the my read over of the article, it sounds like it's also just an attempt for the local judge to just get the whole town in the into one room so they can straighten everything out. Yeah, which, which to be fair, to be honest, we we had you know our, our laughs and our chuckles and our breaks because sewing things onto the ballots. What the fuck? You know, we, we've had our, our, our moments here, but seriously, I, I do hope they work it out. Yeah. Because, and, and everything works out well for them. Oh, God. And with that, that is our news and thus towards the end of our show. Oh, God, the news. Oh. Sewing onto a ballot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm right? going to be mulling that one over for a while. I, probably a lot of our listeners will be too. <laughs> oh my God! So, so let, let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, we got about three minutes left, and that's about how long it's going to take for all of us to go through our spiels. Um, wa watch this. So, uh, if we wanted to find uh, Trent and Greg on on the good old internets and social media and all that, where could we find them? Well, uh, primarily uh, Isle of Rangoon dot com. Or uh, Blip TV slash Isle of Rangoon. We're also on Facebook, Facebook slash Isle of Rangoon. Um, uh, our Twitter handle is also Isle of Rangoon. I sense a theme. And uh, our Tumblr is Isle of Rangoon .tumblr .com. And there is a prototype of YouTube coming up. We're going to give a go at that. Sweet. But it's very, but it's still a very early, very little on there. Yeah. Uh, so. YouTube likes to flag our opener. So. Oh God, YouTube and their automated flagging system, motherfuckers. They flagged one of the things we thought was in the public domain. Wow. Like the British, like our Brit, uh, we did a thing on British uh, old safety things from like what was it, the forties? Yeah. Apparently, it's held in a really obscure. Um, not quite public domain, public license. Mm -hmm. In and England, so... In, in England, and huh. so it's... Despite the fact that I don't think the... I don't think the British crown is going to care that some puppets made fun of this, uh, you know, how to use traffic signals thing from the 1940s. And, you know, only carry five pounds in notes when going abroad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, the auto flagging system makes makes YouTube really tricky to use. We've got that, and also um, we have a a, a toy project which is bmogtoys.com. Ooh, sounds fun. Oh god, so uh, Kat, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, facebookcom slash cat and you can find me on Twitter. Uh, no, yeah, Twitter on Labyrinth Cat, and then Facebook.com slash Nerdist Cat, and then you can find me over on uh, What the Fuck on Radiodrome, and then on my other show, Nerd to the Third, over on Tigwitig. Wait, What the Fuck on Radiodrome? Is it on Radiodrome? No, Radiodrome is the podcast. 
Radio Dra- – oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, I think you mean Jackalope Radio. Jackalope Radio. Oh, my God. I can't <laughs> think today. Um, yeah. Oh, no. I, 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 you, you know what I mean. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody has to know what I mean. Yes, and in addition to Jackalope Radio, I know they also go up at 121beyond.com too. Yes. Because I pay attention to that. <laughs> I don't. I don't pay attention. I just show up and talk. There you go. Oh, I, I blame the news for, for your fried brain here. I'll yes. Blame the news. Especially this last one with the sewing, the sewing fucking sewing. bell. What the fuck? Sewing. Ah. So, and finally, if you wanted to find me on the social media, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, etc. at Gomer21XX. Uh, you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and facebook.com. No, nerdvice.com, rather. Although, technically, you can find my stuff on facebook.com because both RT Gomer Productions and Nerdvice do, do have their individual Facebook pages. So, you know, my stuff does appear there by default, I'm sure. Definitely on mine. I don't know how often the Nerdvice one gets updated, but... But yeah, and and if you want to follow the site on Tumblr, there is RT Gomer Prod on Tumblr as well. And just recently, we actually, uh, uh, my girlfriend and I started up a uh, a uh, secrets blog for the uh, for the site as well. Because why the hell not? <laughs> I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing what people put up in there. Uh, so uh, so yeah, and uh, da, 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 is that it? Oh no, that is not it. Because uh, if you guys like the show that. The shows that I do that I put out there and produce and everything. You want to help? You want to help support the shows that I do. The this show, uh, Poor Charlie Podcast, uh, Constructive Deconstruction, all the videos that I do, and and all that good stuff. Then head on over to my Patreon page, uh, patreoncom slash gomer 21 x and money goes towards you know besides basic things, it also goes towards things like production upgrades, production equipment upkeep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and um, and right now, I do want to put put out there that the site might be in a little trouble uh, space wise, because uh, we're running out of space, and we need a little, little. We're gonna need a little bit of extra money to put towards it to get some more space. But um, I'm gonna do some kind of fundraising thing or whatever for it somehow. I'm just thinking about the details or what have you. Uh, but I'll let you guys know if you just follow my Tumblr or Twitter or whatever. Those announcements will come there. Um, and as a bonus, uh, as I'd like to do with almost every show, as long as I can remember, uh, my girlfriend is Becky Hopkins. She is an award-winning animator, and she does really great artwork. In fact, she does some of the title cards for some of my stuff. And I know one of one of our other newbies, uh, uh, Steve the Wicked, he's got a couple of title cards done by her as well. And she does an amazing job. If you want to get some of her artwork, go over to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Which also has links to her DeviantArt and to her own personal website. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you. So I think that's nice, and she can always use the money. So uh, yeah, with that, I've rambled enough through all of this. I, I think I've rambled most of the show, as I want to do. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get out of here. Again, thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with the cat, Greg, and Trent, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.